So you mentioned different types of vitamin K, vitamin K1, which typically comes from green leafy vegetables, uh, vit uh, vitamin MK4, which is a type of vitamin K2, which typically comes from animal-based foods and to your point is the only one that's produced by the body. And then there's MK7, which typically comes from fermented foods uh, like uh, the Japanese natto that some people may be familiar with. Um, so if someone is thinking about supplementing vitamin K2 um, in order to prevent the calcification and make sure it's going to the bones instead of the soft tissues, as you point out, uh, which form should they take and, and what, what do you think an appropriate dosage would be? Are they now, interchangeable or are they, or are they different? Good. I, I will catch on the last phrase. Thank you for asking me that, Dr. Seppa. They are interchangeable. And, and, and if you were to ask me even a month ago, I would, I would only stick to it. I only bear out what I know. And then less than a month ago, it seemed like vitamin K1, the phyloquinone, converts to vitamin K2, and it's specifically the MK4. Others are unknown. Surprisingly, in Journal of Nutrition, is EPUB. You can Google it. They tried it in animal. They gave a group of animal control. So there's a control group. And then they give, which means that there's standard amount of vitamin K1 and K2 member, the body makes it. So they have a baseline level. Then they gave another group uh, MK4. So you would expect that the MK4 would absorb. Then they gave another group MK, MK7 uh, and MK9, that mm -hmm. group. It also converts to MK4. This mm. is remarkable. And then they give them phyloquinone, vitamin K1. It also went to MK4. So, oh my God. So that means that evolutionarily, whatever vitamin K we take, it converts to MK4. So now I said, wow, this is more than meets the eye like that, you know? However, I just wanted to be clear. Right. If you take this vitamin in the gut, the gut would ferment. Now, you mentioned the Japanese natto is more than that, Dr. Seppa. In the Western diet that we eat, if you eat cheese, mm. if you, of course, if you're Korean, all of it eat kimchi, right. all these are fermented. Anything that ferment, even in soya sauce, they're fermented soya bean like that. Anything that is fermented or even cured meat mm -hmm. like that, uh, 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 uh a lot of Italian cured meat it escaped my right. mind now. Prosciutto. Like that. Prosciutto, thank you, thank you. So, or, or even ham, you're going to find some MK because of the fermentation of the bacteria. But I wanted to say that to qualify that, short of that, MK4 is unique. And now a, a published study, it is from University of Texas, Tough University, this too, and then there may be a third institution published in Journal of Nutrition. Whatever the vitamin K that is a feed material, it converts to MK4. So to answer your question, perhaps then a blend of vitamin K and mm -hmm. including GG make good sense for the proper balance of vitamin K in the body that is uh, for the clotting factor for the removal of arterial calcification, for the strengthening of the bone, for all this uh, thing, and for the synthesis of MK4 in our body, and for synthesis of CoQ10. So this is a new age that until now we didn't know. So I think of this vitamin K now have a new lease of life in the, in the path of anti-aging. Yeah, fantastic. And, you know, I, I was actually reading some of the Japanese researcher studies. Um, now, these are um, in vitro studies in cells and, and also rat studies in which they were testing um, different forms of vitamin K2. Um, and they found that the MK4 form that you mentioned um, tends to have a really interesting effect, uh, yeah. which is stimulating testosterone. In fact, they were doubled in, these, in the rat studies. They were doubling uh, their testosterone production without increasing LH. Uh, which is interesting because, you know, companies like ours, Maximus, we use SERMs or selective estrogen receptor modulators like Enclomiphene that increase testosterone through the simulation of LH. This actually seems to do it through a completely novel mechanism um, mm. in promoting steroidogenesis. So actually upstream, it stimulates progesterone production. Um, and, um, 
the, the hypothesis, I, I guess, of the researchers is that it, stimul- it increases the enzymes PKA uh, and cyclical AMP response element binding protein, or what's called CREB, CREB, in the testes, which likely causes the enzyme CYP11A to become more active, which increases the synthesis of um, testosterone. So can you tell a little bit about sort of like uh, th- this unique benefit of sort of vitamin K in terms of um, uh, stimulating testosterone um, and also uh, GG's role in that? Okay. Now here, I, I, I pay respect to you, uh, Dr. Serpa, you're an expert in this area. And for me, I'm kind of like thrust into this on the testosterone thing, because I would have my my table is full with all the other thing, but I deal, I have to deal with this. But so but I must disclose that I'm not an expert in the testosterone field. So I read like everybody else. Mm -hmm. The original reason when the Japanese uh, scientists were doing this was the Japanese population uh, are growing older than the world oldest uh, uh, group of people. So when you see these o- older folks, they wanted to improve their thrive like that. And and they know that testosterone would increase their thrive, steady their gait like that. So they mm-hmm. did that. And those kind of studies we saw. And then they even gave MK4 uh, like that, and it would also improve. They have studied, they showed that they gave MK4 and they will increase the testosterone. Then they decided to use GG. At the time, they did not know other than the GG is part of the tail. They never came to connect that. The GG they gave to the animal, the GG converts the MK4 and then do the job. Mm-hmm. Based on other studies, it seemed to be like that. However, when they did give the GG to the animal, the testosterone increased. So, so because of that, we are thrilled. So right now, I know the study won't be until next year. Because of this, we are conducting a study uh, uh, of men and women, giving them GG and to test the increase of the testosterone To- free testosterone, total testosterone, and bound testosterone, and a whole host of other things that measure uh, the increase of thrive, including sexual thrive, like that. Mm-hmm. So that we don't have that answer now. We base it on animal study. So what you're seeing for me is this: when we see this, we will just decide it. We just decide to do the study based mm-hmm. on what we find, like that. So I don't know where that study is going to go. I, I I'm a uh, Excited as I'm a little nervous, unlike GG converting to MK4, GG converted to CoQ10, you can clearly see the molecule of GG embedded in MK4 and CoQ10. Right. The molecule of GG is not embedded in testosterone and, and progesterone, but they cl- the Japanese scientists clearly showed that when they gave to the animal GG, testosterone increase and progesterone increase. So right. I-, I am as excited as I'm nervous about this. So th- that's the best I can do now to, to tell you that. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit more, more about GG in a second. In the meantime, um, one interesting little tidbit, because I was reading the original um, chapter that the researchers uh, mentioned, and there was a, a tiny little line that, that I, I think was maybe other people haven't caught. Um, they actually cited unpublished data as part of that chapter showing that MK3 and MK7, these other forms of vitamin K, also stimulated uh, testosterone production, at least in cell studies. Um, now, unfortunately, they didn't show say how much. Um, I've reached out to the researchers. I'd love to look at the data uh, that they, they haven't published yet. So do you think that vitamin <laughs> MK7 could potentially work as well as MK4 in stimulating testosterone, hypothetically? Yeah. So we only talk. This is interesting. The study that will be, that just came out in EPUB said that whether they give them MK4 phyloquinone, MK9, or or any other vitamin K, they all convert to MK4. Mm-hmm. So including MK7. Right. And they, the Japanese scientists already showed that MK4 increase testosterone. Right. So then using that same hypothetical thinking, so if they give them MK7, It would also, yes, it would also increase testosterone probably through the conversion of MK7 to MK4 and therefore increase the testosterone. 
from the yep. study that is now published. The, the, pub, the published study now is just to show the biochemistry and the nutrition. Right. They are not going to the testosterone side, sure. but that would be the closest. You, you picked, I did not pick that up. If the MK3 thing is interesting, the MK3 thing to go to MK4 is an anabolism. You have to make mm -hmm. the molecule bigger, not cut right. it down. Usually the body cut it down. So the MK3 thing is like the manodione. So they'll find a molecule to stitch on to make it longer to MK4. The MK7 is what I can explain more. The MK3 is adding on.